Well, good afternoon, everyone, or good morning if you're uh, over in Western Australia or anywhere else uh, in Australia. And thank you for attending uh, this update on the CPIM reconfigura reconfiguration. I'm off to a great start already. Uh, guys, just as a matter of housekeeping, this uh, webinar is being recorded. So if there is anyone who uh, has missed out, a colleague, a friend, uh, please feel free to point them to our website. I will be publishing this up probably early next week to our website. Um, also, as another matter of housekeeping and something a little bit different for this afternoon, the slides that I have to go through are going to be very quick. Uh, we're not going to take very long to get through those at all, but I'm opening up the floor to questions and answers. Now, there are quite a number of you on the webinar already, so I'm not going to open it up to audio uh, questions because that would just turn into chaos and mayhem. But if you could become familiar with where the chat pod and or the question pod is in your controls panel or control center when you logged in, um, you can post questions to me at any time throughout this webinar. Don't feel like you have to wait until the very end. And what I will be doing is at the end, I will actually go through those questions and answer them anonymously. So don't feel embarrassed to ask questions. No one will know who asked what, um, but feel free to ask the question. Now, if I don't know the answer, and there may be a few questions that I don't know the answer to, I will take those offline and address those as part of our ongoing FAQ with the CPIM and the CPIM reconfiguration. Okay, well, let's get started. I think we've got the majority of people logged in now. So thank you again to all those who are attending um, the webinar. This is the second uh, webinar for the CPIM reconfiguration that ASCII is running. Uh, just uh, a matter of introduction, I am Clint Burtonshaw, the Senior Operations Officer here at the Australasian Supply Chain Institute. And uh, I guess my role here is to pretty much get all our courses going, uh, make sure that uh, everything is running as far as our partners go and the like. So I'm in the best position as far as telling you where we are going with the uh, certification courses, um, in particular the reconfigura reconfiguration of CPIM. And what I don't know, I can certainly find out. So again, please don't hesitate to ask any questions that may not get answered. What are we talking about today? Well, we're going to do a bit of a recap from the last webinar. I know I, I recognise quite a few names from the previous webinar, so sorry guys for those who um, are going to see slides that you've already seen. This will be quick, this will be brief, uh, but it's important for those who haven't actually attended or seen the first webinar just to get an idea of what's going on. Then I'm going to be talking about something that I know that you are all very keen on, and that is the pricing for the new CPIM and the delivery options that are available for ASCII. We then got a slide that talks about timelines and availability, and this has pretty well come straight from uh, Apix themselves. And then we're gonna open up to the Q&A at the end there. All right, so just as a matter of a recap, why is the CPIM changing? Well, in short, this slide just pretty well covers off the fact that Apix went away and took a look at their certification courses took a look at the CPIM and realised that as far as CPIM goes in conjunction to the massive, massive range of certification courses that are out there, it's pretty much become a bit of an outlier as far as, far as time and investment goes. Um, as most of you would be aware, five modules, five exams, it's a heck of an investment. So they've gone back, looked at the materials, looked at um, what they can condense, and now they've come down to the new reconfigured option. Just for a matter of uh, housekeeping, really, where does CPIM fit into the whole suite of Apex uh, courses? Well, just looking purely at certification, we have this little model that I use, I like to call it the house or the tent, if you will. And you can see that CPIM and CLTD sort of sit on the same level, if you will. One looking at production and inventory, one looking at logistics and transport. And then overlying all of that is CSCP, which starts to move you out of the operational and more into the strategic mindset and looking at the supply chain from a holistic approach. Um, one good thing that is coming out of all this is that now with the way that the CPIM is being reconfigured, 
more than ever does it feel like it is part of this suite as opposed to almost like a, a legacy product. So what's the change? Well, the five modules and five exams are being moved into two modules and two exams. So I don't need to tell you that's going to be um, much less time consuming to get through and also it's going to be a lot more efficient, I would say. Um, the courseware will be formatted into a learning system. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with what a learning system is, the CLTD and the, CP and the um, CSCP currently um, have learning systems. That is, they have all their books and they also have a, a whole suite of online tools that you can utilize throughout the duration of your study. These online tools include practice exams and questions and also additional pieces of reading and the likes. Now, something I don't mind saying is that based on all the information we've been provided as the premier channel partner of Apex, I would almost say that the CPIM is going to set a new benchmark um, as opposed to the CPIM coming up to the same standard as CLTD and CSCP, I actually see that the CPIM, as far as quality of materials, will surpass um, CLTD and CSCP, and their standards are going to be lifted. So they're going to be much more comprehensive, the learning systems. This is fantastic because what this means is, is that two things will come about at one, if you want to study by yourself in a self-study format, you can do that. And you will have all the tools available to you to do just that. It also means that if you do attend a class, the class will be more of a flipped classroom ap approach and it will incorporate blended learning. These are all the fantastic bug buzzwords that uh, we in the L&D world talk about. But in essence, what that will mean is that you will not be going to a class to just essentially have an instructor regurgitate information to you. To me, time is of the essence. We're not you know, we don't want to give up our precious time to just sit there and hear someone repeat to you exactly what you could read. So the classroom experience will utilize new tools and new activities and new discussions to help solidify the information that you will essentially get from the learning system. So it's not going to be a case of coming to class and having someone download all that information to you. It's going to be a case of coming to class and enhancing the learning. This is really important because one of the things we'll be doing is actually breaking up. I'm just going to jump ahead a couple of slides here. We're actually going to be breaking up the way we're offering the CPIM, the CSCP and the CLTD. In short, you will now be able to purchase the learning system separately to everything else then decide based on what you feel about the learning system, whether you want to self-study, attend a facilitated class, or coming later in the year, early 2018, potentially purchase some tutoring time. So let me just talk about those three uh, elements. Self-study is exactly that. You will utilize the learning system to study at your own pace, at your own time, when and where you feel the need. By all accounts, anywhere you can open up a textbook and get access to the internet, you'll be able to study. Facilitated class is where you will attend a class that ASCII will be putting on with an accredited APIX instructor at any one of our locations around the nation. Now, at the moment, we don't offer a lot of classes outside of uh, New South Wales and Victoria, and that's purely come down to a decline in numbers. However, with the new CPIM reconfiguration, and with the fact that there's, we're not, we're going to be doing more concentrated offerings as far as our classes go. We will actually be opening up to the other states as well. And if we meet the numbers, the class will go ahead. If we don't meet the numbers, the class won't go ahead. But at least you will not be um, disadvantaged by not being able to study because you will have the learning system. When you do attend a class, however, the the way the class will be structured will be different to how you may have done classes in the past if you are if you have previously studied any of the CPIM modules. So it will be very much expected that you will be doing readings and activities on your own time. 
and then attending the class to then enhance that learning through the activities and the like that the facilitator will have at their disposal to help you understand, discuss, build on what you've learned. The third option being tutoring is something that I am currently working through at the moment to put into place. And what it will be is it'll be for, for those of you who don't want to attend a class and dedicate the time to going to a class each week or each fortnight, who maybe feel that self-study is okay, but there might be a few elements that you feel that you're a little bit lost with or need some extra um, help with. What we can then do is partner you one-on-one -on -one with an APEX accredited facilitator for some tutoring time. And those tutoring sessions will be based on exactly what you want them to be. It won't be like if for those of you who have maybe done distance learning with us in the past, where essentially it is trying to condense the classroom experience into an over the phone experience. For some of you that works out really well, for others of you, you may feel like you're, you're rushing or whatever else. What the tutoring experience will be is essentially you saying to the facilitator, these are the concepts I wanna go over. And you will have X amount of hours to do that in, and you can use all those hours on one thing. You might spread them out over the course of your study. You may check in once a day, once a week, once a month, whatever. You will be in control of what you want to do as far as this study goes. The benefit to this is it is one-on-one, -on -one, so it's going to be a tailored experience. It's not like a facilitator in a classroom who has to adapt the learning to multiple people of multiple backgrounds, of multiple different uh, knowledge levels. It will be perfectly adapted to you. And should you run out of your uh, tutoring hours and you feel like you want more, you can purchase more. Now the argument often comes up, when do I just start go, going to a classroom? My thoughts on that are very simple. Even if you purchase four times the amount of tutoring hours than just attending the class, you may actually find that it was better value of, for money because that experience is purely for you. You're not sharing it with anyone else. You're not having to sit there and hope that your questions get answered if you're a little bit shy. You, it really is about you and the facilitator. Now, I don't foresee that you're going to need to spend four times as much as a class. That's an extreme example. But the fact that it is one-on-one -on -one, as opposed to one-to-many or by yourself, it really does give you that leg up. So that's just another option. And as I say, these three options are up to you. You purchase the learning system first, you'll receive the learning system through us, open it up, have a look, register for your online tools, have a bit of a, a read through and start studying. And then at that point, you might be like, okay, we need to take it to the next level. Once you're done and you're all studied up and ready to go and you're feeling confident, you purchase your exam. Now at the moment, we are actually having the exams handled directly over the phone. You'll probably speak to uh, Retta, who's our programs officer, and um, she will actually double check what membership level you have with us, and that will become important in a moment, and take you through the details as far as uh, your exam goes, purchasing the ATT, utilizing the credit, registering with Pierce and View, all that good stuff. So making sure that you're ready to go as far as purchasing your exam. The beauty of the exams, it doesn't matter whether you're doing CPIM, Module 1 or Module 2, CLTD or CSCP, all exams now are on demand, sort of. They're on demand in the fact that there are no longer exam windows. What they are, though, is you attend a Pearson View Centre based on when there's availability. So kind of like booking your tickets for a movie nowadays, first in best dress, get the seat you want. So on any given day, if there is a seat available at the time slot you choose, it's all yours. Go down to the centre and do your, uh, do your exam. If there's no availability on a given day, look at another day. First in best dress. So you're no longer waiting for exam windows, which was always a problem in the past where you, particularly those who did self-study, they're all ready to go, they're keen, they're ready, the knowledge is there, they're burning but I've got to wait two weeks for my exam. Poor experience, this way that's, uh, that's out of the road. All right, so I'm just gonna back up the slides a little bit. Um, that's pretty much all the, uh, all the changes there. Those of you who have seen it before, great. Those who haven't, 
you can uh, check this out in your own time, but most of it's on our FAQ on our CPIM reconfiguration page. Uh, how does it impact you? Just take a read of that if you're in the middle of CPIM or about to start CPIM, pretty much all scenarios have been covered here. I'm not going to uh, go through this line by line, but in short, what ASCII has done is ensured that our legacy classes are rolling off in such a way that you can't get caught in the pipeline. So realistically, if you are currently studying CPIM, I can almost ensure that if you've kept on top of things, you would be in a class for Term 3 in DSP. Then in Term 4, you'll do ECO. Then in Term 1 2018, you would do SMR, and you would then be able to complete quite comfortably. If you're at the point of doing MPR, for instance, or you haven't done DSP yet, I have no problem in saying to you right now that the best thing to do would have been just to wait for t um, module two. And you'll see why in a moment with the pricing and the timing. At the end of the day, you're gonna have far less exams to get through and you're gonna save some dollars. For ECO and SMR, it probably works out a bit cheaper to actually continue with the legacy format. Um, yes, you've got two exams to do, but you're already this far. So that's pretty well where we are. It does come down to your own personal situation and financial situation. So don't let me tell you what to do, but we've tried to ensure that no one gets trapped along the way. All right, um, this just covers off what we were talking about, the bundling and the uh, decoupling and all that jazz. So if you have purchased legacy that was bundled and as part of those bundles, uh, exam credits will have been issued accordingly. But moving forward, you won't, we won't be offering the bundles at this stage. Here we go. Pricing for the APIC certification, and I've put all the APIC certifications on here. Your three key areas to note are the prices of the learning systems for members and non-members. Now, when I say members, that is both standard members and our plus members. Non-members, you pay the maximum price. 40 exams, if you're a standard member, you'll get one price. If you're a plus member, you get the maximum discount. And that is because our plus membership includes the Apex e-membership, and therefore we can get the exams at the absolute best price. And if you're a non-member, you're going to pay a much larger price. Uh, and then the classes, all classes now, uh, 1650 for members, irrespective of whether you're plus or standard, and 1900 for non-members. So this goes back to just to reiterate the fact that you will purchase your learning system, and then should you wish to, to um, let's use an example, if you purchase uh, CPIM module one, if you're a member, it'll cost you 950 for the learning system. That shows up to your house. We'll get that out to you in Express Post. You open it up, great. You've got your uh, your books and your online stuff to register and start using. And then you're like, geez, I really want to attend a class. So what you'll do is you'll jump onto our website and you'll find when the next class is. We've actually just posted up about uh, two to three weeks ago a full 2018 certification course schedule so you can start planning in advance um, and then you can register for the class and that will cost you 1650 if you're a member or 1900 if you're a non-member and that doesn't matter about how many days where it's located it's the one standard price will the class go ahead it will all depend on numbers at the end of the day as long as we have the minimum numbers in the class it will get green lit and you'll be attending the class without any dramas. What do you get when you attend the class? Well, you get the classroom experience. We'll also provide you with um, these slide pack. So if you've uh, ever checked out CLTD or CSCP, because they know you've got the learning systems, they will also provide you with, well, when you attend the class, you get provided with the um, slide pack. And the slide pack's really cool in the fact that it's all the slides a facilitator will go through, space to write some notes. And depending on the facilitator and what activities are planned that day, you may not even need to bring the learning system to class with you. You definitely will need it at home. So please don't think that by going down the path of a class route, you won't need the learning system. That couldn't be further from the truth. What this does though is a slide deck's just a nice little 
spiral book that you could use when you're in class rather than having to ship the whole learning system with you to and from class. Um, obviously, that's all dependent on what the facilitator is doing on the day. So when you are in class, it's always worth checking out with them. All these prices, by the way, have been published to our website. Learning systems are purchased through the store on our website and uh, classes, you will register them against the event. So while we've got the full schedule up, when registrations open for those classes, they will be on the uh, in the What's On section or our calendar of our website, and you would just register them like any event, just like you've done today to attend this webinar. And exams, as I say, you'll call up um, the national office here, and you'll probably end up speaking to Redda, and she'll take you through what's required as far as sorting out your exam. Timeline and availability. Here's the clincher. We're taking the pre-sales for CPIM Module 1 and Module 2 are actually going into, oh, well, they're going to pre-sale with Apex on August 7th. What that means is partners will be able to actually order from Apex on August 7th, and then it will take however long for them to start dispatching it. Now, they've already told us that um, CPIM uh, Module 2 won't be dispatching until the end of August, and they'll probably start dispatching CPIM Module 1 within the next couple of weeks. So I know that I've got a lot of eager um, members and non-members out there who are very keen to either get started or carry on the CPIM journey. So as of this afternoon, right at the end of this webinar, you can actually get a deposit in to secure your um, learning system for whatever you require, CPI module one or module two. You lay your $250 uh, non-refundable deposit down. I, I have to reiterate, it is non-refundable. And what we'll be doing is as soon as the orders um, open up, we will put in our first order with Apex. Then as soon as they arrive here at the ASCII offices, we will get in contact with you and send you an invoice for the remaining amount. And once paid, we'll get those learning systems express post out to you. So couldn't be easier to get a hold of this today and make sure you get it as soon as possible. And you can see a bit of details here around uh, CPIM part one and part two. Uh, things to uh, note, if you have completed the, uh, the original first module of Sorry, I think my line just went muted. Sorry, I'll just repeat that. If you have completed CPIM uh, Legacy Basics, you will um, know that you can actually go straight into Module 2. So Apex are um, seeing that Basics is the equivalent to Module 1, and so you don't actually have to sit the exam for CPIM Part 1 uh, under this new format which is fantastic for those of you have, who have started the CPIM journey. All right, it's time for the Q&As. So uh, feel free to use the chat boxes or the uh, question box to post up any questions you have. Um, they will come through to me and I'm just waiting for a few to come through and then I will start to uh, answer those. Uh, if you think of anything post, feel free to um, Email us on inquiries at ascii.org.au. Okay, I've got a question here around a corporate membership. Okay, corporate membership is interesting. The question is, um, is it in regards to standard membership or plus membership? And the answer is it could be either. What we'd need to do is actually find out what was agreed as part of that corporate arrangement. So, the reason why I say that is the corporate membership that's usually provided will be based on if you're doing any uh, any other courses with us. So for example, if we're in your organization and we're talking to you about doing say uh, the principles, which is another Apex uh, offering, but it's not certified. We may just um, point you down the direction of getting standard membership because you're not going to require any discounts for exams. If however, uh, you want to do, say, CPIM. We may have actually sent you down the direction of a plus membership so that when it comes to exam time, you're getting the best price possible. So if you're not too sure, find out who organised your corporate membership or by all means, give us a hoi and uh, we can certainly take a look at that for you. All right. Uh...
All right, this is an interesting question here regarding having done CSCP. Do you only have to do CPIM part two? Look, the simple fact is, is that they still consider the three certifications as three certifications. So if you've only done CSCP and you wanna do CPIM, my understanding, and I don't believe it's going to change anytime soon, but you, um, the asker of this question, you may want to uh, just double check with Apex for your own uh, account, um, but, my understanding is you would still have to do module one and module two because that's deemed part of the complete CPIM certification. If it was that you'd done basics, they're honoring that at the moment purely as far as just moving from the legacy to the new. And so they realize that there would be people who had started basics and by the time they roll all this off, it would be difficult to sort of get right through. Plus they haven't changed basics all that much. So one of the things you will um, find is that module one is essentially just basics tidied up for the new year. Module two, however, is the condense and reconfiguration of the other four modules. So, yeah, but by all means, whenever you have questions like that, I do recommend talking to Apex. Uh, they obviously have their uh, uh, their maintenance uh, requirements and they may or may not honour that depending on where they're going with it. At the moment, we haven't been told that we're allowed to do it in any other way than what's been explained. Oh, okay, this, uh, I'm getting asked a loaded question here. How can I compare the last two modules, ECO, SMR with the new module two? Okay, well, the simple fact is, is even though we're a premier channel partner, we haven't actually seen any materials yet. They haven't, Apex haven't been so kind as to show us the actual material. Here's what I can tell you. Module two is taking DSP, MPR, ECO and SMR and creating module two. Now, one thing I have seen though, is that they've done it so that where you, if you were to follow the normal flow of the legacy program, and I say normal flow, because there was never an actual mandate to say you had to do it this way, it was just highly recommended, um, you would do SMR last. Now, one of the things I've observed over time is the fact that because most of um, CPIM was very operational and then you suddenly got to this strategic module, people kind of found it a little bit hard to sort of switch that mindset and whatever else. What they're doing first, uh, straight off the ranks is so module one will be basics, great, so now you've got your foundations. And then when you start module two, the first topic, if you will, is SMR. I reckon that's fantastic because what you can do is once you've got that understanding, that strategic idea, then you can interweave that into the operational concepts. Um, so if I was in the situation of doing, uh, of being in the ECO SMR sort of pipeline at the moment, what would I do? I don't know. I don't know. I'll tell you why I don't know. The simple fact is I like the idea of one exam and I'm lazy. <laughs> I'm lazy and I'd rather just get one exam out of the road, but I also don't like re going over the same stuff over and over again. So in my mind, if you don't mind going over the same stuff over and over again, and or you feel like you want a bit of a revision of the other modules, then by all means, do module two, hit the one exam out of the park and the job's done. But if you feel like, oh, look, I've already got my head well and truly around ECO and I just need to get around SMR or, or, you know, I'm almost ready to do the ECO exam or whatever the case may be in that regards, just weigh up financially. Is it worthwhile sitting there doing the two and um, going, going on it from there? You do have to do the two exams. There's no sort of RPL or anything like that involved in this, RPL being recognition of prior learning. The other thing to consider too is your situation as far as learning goes. With the learning systems, you can do this by yourself. So you might sit there and go, well, over the next, call it six months, you've got a hectic schedule and trying to get to a class is going to be difficult. Then it would make sense to sit there and grab the learning system skim through whatever you already know, study what you do know, what you don't know, and then take the exam that way. So there's a few different scenarios in my mind that I would be going through, and then you've got a way up which is gonna be more appealing to yourself. All right, next question. 
Okay, when will I have an idea of the cost of tutoring? Yeah, good question. Um, look, I'll give you a ballpark at the moment, but don't hold me to this. I'm doing this because I like you guys. Um, I'm just having a look at my notes here because, of course, I didn't have this uh, prepared. I think at the moment I was working at around being um, about $500 for a few hours tutoring or something like that. No, sorry. It was the, the rough plan I'm working for at the moment will be five one-hour tutoring sessions at approximately $700. The tutoring window you would be provided would be about 10 weeks. And the reason why I put a tutoring window around that is because I know some people take advantage the thing is is these facilitators need to get paid no no one works for free um if you do fantastic and I, my hat goes off to you but everyone needs to make money nowadays um so i need to pay the facilitators and they generally will get paid at the end of their assignment if the assignment is tutoring they would get paid at the end of that so if someone's doing one session per month for the next 12 months that's a long time to sort of be waiting for cash injection. So what we do is we'll set up a, a, a window, which at this stage I'm working off 10 weeks. Um, I'm looking at around about the $700 mark, but please, anyone who's listening to this webinar, don't try and quote it back to me because it's not set in stone until it's set in stone. And um, yeah, what you'll also get as part of that is you'll get a complimentary session with the tutor, usually about 30 minutes long before your hours start. So what that complimentary session will be is to discuss with the tutor what um, what you need from the tutoring session. So for instance, it might be that you are solid as a rock with certain concepts of supply chain, but when it comes down to other things, you might be like me and it might be even some of the mathematics that goes into um, you know the supply chain equations and whatever else, you might be sitting there going, yeah, nah, that's where I want to put my time. And that's what you would discuss with the facilitator. Now, what we'll also be doing is if you do decide to then purchase an additional pack on top of that, you will still get that extra 30 minutes. The reason why I'm happy to do that is because I feel that each time you purchase a tutoring pack, you should have that option to be able to say to the facilitator, well, this is what I want to do with these hours moving forward. So I think this will be a, a much better option. Um, the other thing too, which I've been asked when I've been talking about this is, do I, is the, are the hours prorated in any way? So if I don't use up all my time, do they roll over or that? No. Unfortunately, I'm not a phone company. You purchase the pack. If you use the full um, five one-hour sessions, great. If you don't, great. If you go over in a particular session, so I don't, you know, we're not like doctors around here where we're going to sit there having a the clock and charge you for every moment, but it does come up to that facilitator. So if the facilitator sits there and goes, well, you know, this session's actually gone for an hour and a half, well, they'll calculate an hour and a half against your time. So that's, they're all the little quirks that I'm um, working for at the moment. If anyone's got any ideas or feedback that you'd like me to um, consider, by all means, send those through because the whole point of the tutoring is to help you guys as the students. All right, what have we got? Um, excellent question here. Is there any discounts when multiple people in one company want to take the same... Same course, okay. Always is the answer, but it depends on what we, what sort of discounts we can apply. So, when you say multiple people, obviously multiple two is not enough for me to drop massive discounts on this thing. But we do have, um, we, we have uh, Monique who will, uh, by all means, come out and look at um, corporate training. Corporate training can come in many forms. Corporate training could be a case of, with these learning systems, maybe the uh, facilitator just comes into your place of business uh, once every so often over the over an agreed period of time and does almost like a, a an in-person tutoring session, maybe if you will, more of a check-in session because it, um, you know your team might be very much quite studious and you just want everyone to be on the same card and make sure that you're, you're bouncing around ideas and the like. It could be that the whole 
session is or the whole tr uh, training is covered. So in the case of say uh, CPI module two, that will be six days long. So it might be that a facilitator will come into your place of business once a week for six weeks, or it might be for half a day once a week for 13 weeks or something like that. Um, and then the beauty of doing something like that is we can then uh, do discounts usually on the cost of the facilitator coming in. The 1650, it's actually, um, when we do corporate training, it's 1800 per day for a facilitator to come in. And that also includes things like meeting with the organizer and the likes to discuss how to add some kind of um, customization to the training. Now with certification courses, we cannot uh, change the content in any way. That is a mandate from our certification partners, in this case, Apex. However, what we can do is sort of sit there and go, well, how can we um, incorporate your business into this training? So look, I've worked for a number of companies and every company has different processes and procedures and the way they do things and the like. Well, you might be talking about concept A and there might be a whole range of process and procedures that might want to be interjected into that discussion. Great. The facilitator and your subject matter experts or a contact there at the, um, at the place of business can organise that within the company. And so it becomes a much more uh, um, engrossing experience. As far as multiple purchases of learning systems, if you were to purchase a large number of them, pick a number from the air, maybe 10, get in contact with us because if I have to, if I'm purchasing a whole bunch of them, then obviously certain things become cheaper. Shipping is cheaper. We're importing from the US, that becomes cheaper. If I'm only sending out the learning systems to one location, be a place of employment, as opposed to sending them out to everyone's individual address, that becomes cheaper. So I might be able to do some discounts there. Uh, what we can also do is corporate discounts on membership as well, which will also help when you go to exams and the like. I hope I answered that question, but if you definitely want to go down that path, let us know and we'd be more than happy to have a, a more uh, concise conversation with you in line with your business and your uh, where you're going with things. Um, okay, question here, passing the first three modules, what do you reckon go ahead with? Again, this goes back to the question I answered a little bit earlier. Uh, could actually, it might be, uh, it might, I think it might be the same person. Yeah, again, look, what it's going to come down to is your personal situation. Um, if you are up to ECO, we're running ECO in term four um, and uh, SMR in term one 2018. Go for it. You can attend the class, you can do it and keep all the legacy stuff the way you're going. The only thing to be aware of is you do have two exams to cover off and the way you go. Um, if it was me, as I said, I don't know. I don't know what I would do. I would also, I, I'd have a think about how important it is for me to get certified, be it decided in new year. So if you were to do ECO in um, term four, it's guaranteed that you won't be doing SMR until term one next year. So if you want your CPIM designation by the end of 2017, well, you have no choice. You're going to have to sit there and do it by the new CPIM. But if uh, that's not a, a priority for you, well, just uh, hang out and do it, um, do SMR in term one and then knock it on its head and get it in the first quarter of 2018. Really is going to come down to personal preference. Um, yeah, sorry, I can't give you more advice on that one. But the thing is, is that's the best advice I can give is really consider your own, uh, what you're planning to do yourself. I mean, for me, money is everything. Um, as for, you know, with a, with a young family, I need to watch every dollar that I spend. So I'd be looking for the cheapest way to do it, not necessarily the quickest time is all good for me. I'd also be looking for flexibility because with two, with two young children, yeah, getting away to go to a class is both a good thing and a bad thing. Now, I, I don't mind sharing with you guys, I've just completed um, my uni degree. And one of the things I really appreciated was the fact that I had to attend a class once a week for the last four years of my life um, to uh, to do my, my classes. Now, that was good because I knew that that was dedicated time that was put aside, but I knew what I was focusing on. And then I de dedicated a separate day on the weekend 
to purely focus on uni and then the rest of the time was work and family. That worked for me. Some of you might be night hours, hours who prefer to be up at all hours of the evening and morning and whatever else, you know, one, two o'clock in the morning hitting the books. I'll tell you now, I'm not running classes at one or two o'clock in the morning. So if that appeals to you, that might be something to consider as well. Uh, someone's asked, can they have the presentation slides? Not so much the slides, but this webinar is being recorded. So yeah, it will be there for all to uh, see. Um, if you need any additional information, most of what I've grabbed anyway is on our website anyway. So uh, feel free to head over and have a bit of a squiz at our, our website. It's gone through massive overhauls um, and you'll get all the information you need and we're more than happy to send you various uh, links and the like. Um, got a question here in regards to MPR. Okay. If you've completed master planning and resource uh, resources module as part of legacy, can you get a credit? No. So no, there's no RPL. At the end of the day, that's just what APICs have done. We have no control over that. This is where I've got to be 100% clear that we are just the channel partner of APICs. We are not APICs. We're a premier channel partner, which is puts us in a better state um, status with them and we get better discounts and can pass them on to you guys and whatever else. But we can't control the way they want to deliver their certification courses and they're not offering any recognition of prior learning or credits um, as far as uh, any of the legacy modules go. So this is where it also comes down to thinking about your previous um, uh, studies that you've done as well. So if you have done NPR, unfortunately, yeah, you are just going to have to do CPI. But the benefit of that is you're going to save a heap of money anyway, because I can tell you now we're 2200 uh, per unit for the other three modules versus the prices that were up previously for uh, CPI and module two, you're already ahead anyway. So as much as that sounds a little bit unsympathetic, it was certainly one of the first things I looked into and that's why I can confidently say that they're not, unless of course they do a, a backflip on this one anytime soon, they're not looking to uh, offer any credits or any sort of recognition there. Um, Ah, excellent question here about CPIM part one. Okay, this has recently changed. Some of you may remember if you've done basics, you actually received a certificate of completion or something to that effect for um, CPIM basics of supply chain management. And that was great. People liked that. If they weren't go, looking to go on and complete the full CPIM, at least they had something to sort of say, hey, you've completed some fundamentals in um, supply chain. Fantastic. Great. Then they turned around and said that they were doing this module one, module two business, and they were going to take that away. As of about a week and a half ago, maybe even two weeks, they're bringing it back. So if you complete CPI and module one, you will actually get a certificate for having completed CPI and module one. What does it look like? How will it appear? All that sort of jazz. We haven't been told any of those details. I would imagine it's going to be uh, a digital certificate that will be accessed via your APIX membership portal, not to be confused with your ASCII membership portal. Um, but yes, there'll be um, that there. The other thing too is you also get a recognition of completing the learning system. So when we see uh, CSCP and CLTD, as you work your way through the learning system, I believe there's like a final exam on that, which isn't your exam for the certification, but it's like an exam to see how you've gone as far as studying through the learning system. And if you get 80% for that, you also get um, a bit of recognition for that in the form of like a certificate of completion for the learning system. So that's kind of cool as well, particularly if you've sort of, uh, uh, you know, just popping it in your resume or whatever the case may be which is always uh, always nice. Um, okay, what else have we got here? Thanks for the session. No worries, appreciate your time this afternoon. Uh, okay, questions around how hard is module two gonna be? That's all relative, it really is relative. Um, what they're doing, so here's some of the feedback I've had in regards to legacy CPIM. 
is it hard? Well, SMR is very challenging, and that's without a doubt. Uh, the amount of people who end up having to take a retake for SMR is quite high in comparison to the other modules. Do I have numbers on that? No, I don't. Uh, do I feel that that's necessary? Probably not, because at the end of the day, what it comes down to is the fact that people will uh, do SMR and they will find that some of the concepts are difficult. Some of, the, um, some of it is difficult purely for the fact that they've worked in operations for so long and now they've got to think from a strategic mindset. And I know myself, when I've moved from an operational to a strategic topic when I was studying at uni, it's a very different way of thinking. And that can often knock you about a bit. Now, as far as how hard module two is going to be, well, for starters, we don't have any materials for that. And the only way you're going to get real feedback is to talk to your colleagues and to those who you respect and maybe learn and understand the way you do um, when it's released. Now, that's a long time to wait if you're sort of sitting back and having a go. My thoughts are simple on this. If you're concerned about difficulty, my honest thoughts on that are do module two. I'll tell you why. Because you're going to be able to purchase a learning system. And you can purchase the learning system anytime, crack it open, start reading through it. And you might sit down and go, geez, this is actually really quite easy. I could do this myself. Fantastic. Use the study tools, hit the books, and have a solid attempt at it. If you crack it open, however, and you're like, wow, my world's just ended, this is the most difficult thing I've ever seen, then register for a class and get some help through one of our accredited facilitators. And then again, when the tutoring comes out, you may just decide that you just want to have a tutor there for some of the concepts that blow your mind a little bit. So that would be my honest opinion on that, because unlike, say, our legacy modules that you have to attend a class for, with the learning systems, you don't have to. So if that's where you kind of, if your head's at, then go for it. Now, I think this same questions come from um, the same person who is up to ECO and SMR. <sighs> You're in a difficult situation for this because you are so close but so far in the same way. Financially, it's probably maybe marginally cheaper to just finish it via legacy, but you've got two more exams. Now, it depends. If you're like me, I hate exams. Absolutely hate them. Uh, I can do really good all, all the way through the content and completely blow it on the exam. So for me... Only having one to deal with, I'd rather sweat one out than two. Um, it sounds like the more I talk about this, the more I'd, I'd be doing just uh, module two. But in the same breath, I don't want you guys to do what I would do. I want it to be your own personal opinion because one thing I won't do, and I'm going to go on the record of saying this, I'm not going to take any liability for, your, for decisions you make based on what I would do in my own personal situation. So please mark my words on that one. Any advice here is just purely based on the facts, you need to be responsible for your own decision on this one. But they're the facts. It's going to be one exam as opposed to two. It's probably going to work out a little bit cheaper. And if you want the ability to somewhat try before you buy, if you will, with module two, you'll be able to get the learning system, have a bit of a look at it, and then decide whether you need class or tutoring or just go it alone. All right, guys, um, i just switching over to see if I've got any questions via the chat window. No, it doesn't look like I have, which is great. Anyone got any other questions you want to ask while you've got me on the line? All right, just to see, uh, I'll tell you what I might get you guys to do. If you would like um, us to potentially send you any details or anything like that, please don't hesitate to um, email inquiries at ascii.org.au um, and let us know what you need more detail on, be it CPI Module 1, CPI Module 2 or both. Uh, please, as of this afternoon, we are taking those pre-orders. So if you'd like to secure a learning system straight off the bat and get it as soon as it arrives in the country, so to speak. Please don't hesitate to uh, to pop in your deposits. Um, 
realistically, we're not going to make an order if we've got no pre-orders because the simple fact is is that we're not going to sit on a whole bunch of stock just for the sake of it. Um, so if you want to get them first, cab, be the first cabs off the rank to have a go at this, by all means, get your pre-orders in. Um, and if you have any other questions that you think of after this webinar, by all means, give us a, a send us an email via uh, inquiries at ascii.org.au and I'd be more than happy to uh, email you back and give you some responses. All right, guys, well, if that's it and it doesn't look like anything else is coming in, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Good luck with your studies if you are currently studying with us. Uh, remember, ASCII isn't just APIC certification. We've also got a whole range of short courses and um, events um, we're currently, I don't mind um, saying at the moment, we are currently working through a complete um, professional development calendar for 2018 as well, which will not only incorporate a lot of face-to-face -face, uh, courses, but also a heap of virtual classrooms. And the reason why we're going virtual is we recognise the fact that we have members all around Australia and we'd like people to be able to partake in them, even if we can't get a face-to-face -face off the ground in that particular state, because unfortunately it costs a lot to get a course off the ground. But virtual, they can be run and you can do them from anywhere. In fact, I had one guy not too long ago who admitted to sitting there doing a short course while sitting on the beach drinking a cocktail. I was very jealous. All right, guys, on that note, enjoy the rest of your week and by all means hit us up with any questions as you may have them. I will close off the webinar now. Catch you all later.